Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today, we're going to talk about a really fun story from Marvel Comics Presents that came out in the early 90s that stars Venom and Wolverine. Uh, and they battle a character named Nightmare. And it's a pretty cool storyline. What I like about it, obviously the art, Sam Keats artwork is really great. He came back in like uh, the Daniel Way run to do some of the covers for those too. Um, great artist, uh, definitely a legend in my mind. I love his style. It's really abstract and weird at times. Uh, he's done a lot of really great stuff over the years and uh, to see him tackle these characters and do it in like an astral plane storyline is really great because it's taken both Venom and Wolverine kind of out of their comfort zone uh, but then you find out that Wolverine is quite the adapter and he adapts pretty quickly to what's going on and so I really like that I thought this storyline was really cool basically what Marvel Comics Presents was was like it was this book that had four short stories in it so on this side you would have two eight page stories and then you flip to the other side and you have two more eight page stories and they would focus characters that at the time maybe weren't able to sustain their own books um, or what they would do is they would take big hitters like Wolverine and Ghost Rider, which took off, you know, those characters took off really quickly, especially after they got their own series with like, you know, Frank Miller with Wolverine and then uh, the Howard Mackey series with, uh, with Ghost Rider and, and Mark Texieri and stuff. So once those characters started to take off, they were like, all right, we'll do Marvel Comic Presents and we'll have Wolverine on one side and Ghost Rider on the other since those are two of our heavy hitters. And then we'll have them team up or we'll bring in other characters that can't sustain their own books. And I thought that was really cool because when Marvel Comics first presents, or the Marvel Comic Presents first started, I think there were stories for like Cyclops and of course there was Wolverine stories, um, but there was uh, all these characters that, you know, didn't have their own series at the time or maybe couldn't sustain their own series. And that's what I really liked about this series because it, you know, it shined a spotlight on these characters that maybe some of them I didn't even know who they were because like, you know, there was stuff in here like you had Ravage 2099. I wasn't even reading Ravage. I think they were about to introduce the 2099 universe uh, at the this time and so it was like oh cool who's this character about it was a great way to introduce new concepts uh, in this one they had giant man they had like a giant man storyline which is pretty cool and then on this side they did a doom 2099 story uh, so again it was just fun ways to bring in other characters constrictor had a two-part story in these two issues and then mirage was in here so yeah it's really fun stuff and and what i like is uh you know a book like this serves a lot of purpose and i'm glad they brought it back recently at marvel with marvel comic presents they have like a new series out now not as quite Quite as interesting i like the flip book uh, format and i like the eight page story format i wish they would do more of that in comics nowadays i think in the uh you know the new marvel comic presents i think it might still be eight or ten page stories but it's just you know one comic with one cover you know going straight through and it's usually like a captain america story a wolverine story a spider-man story it's like all the heavy hitters and i'm kind of like ah, i liked it better when it was like this where it was like one heavy hitter and then maybe one or two characters that you didn't read a ton of because uh, on this side you had ghost rider teaming up with iron fist which was really cool and you know because i collect everything Thing, Dan Catch Ghost Rider, that's where I had these. So I pulled all these out from my Ghost Rider collection, which I think now I'm only missing like four or five issues that Dan Ketch has ever appeared in, uh, and I'm only missing one issue from the main series. I'm missing I'm missing the final issue, 93. I know they did a 94 issue, but uh, 93 was the is the one I'm missing. So eventually I'm going to complete that collection, and we'll make some videos on that, because I know I did the first one, and I haven't gone back to that series. But I have all the boxes lined up, ready to go, so I promise I'll make more Ghost Rider content where we look through my collection very soon. Uh, and this will be part of that collection that we'll look through, because this team up with Iron Fist was pretty fun. Uh, but for here, obviously we're focusing on the Venom and Wolverine stuff. And there's not a lot to talk about because, like I said, they're eight page stories. Uh, so it's a pretty short, you know, series. If you basically put all these into one book, it's like the length of maybe one and a half or two comic books. So it, it's pretty short, you know, overall. But it's a fun adventure. And basically what happens in it is that Wolverine finds that he's having the same dream, the same nightmare over and over where he's hung on this post and these crows are picking away his flesh and they eat him down to the adamantium bones. And then over time, his bones grow back or his, his skin grows back over the bones and the crows come back and eat again. And so he keeps having this dream over and over and he's basically figuring out that someone's causing him to have these dreams. So he goes to Professor X and he says, hey, Professor X, like, why am I having these dreams? And Professor X says, I think it's this character Nightmare. Um, I can sense his presence. He's tried to get into my brain a couple times. It seems like he's trying to get into yours now. I don't know what he wants, but uh, may, you know, maybe I can help you uh, confront him. Uh, he's trying to pull you into a reality called the astral plane. So it's like different than a dream world. It's an actual plane of existence where you can be hurt, where you can be killed. So he's trying to pull you there. So if you want, I can take you there and I'll tether myself to you. So that way, if you need to come back, I can pull you out. And Wolverine's like, yeah, that would be great. I don't like someone poking around my head. 
Especially when at this point in the comics, Wolverine still had no idea who he was. He didn't have all of his memories. He didn't have anything. He didn't know anything about himself outside of maybe the Weapon X stuff and forward. So this, you know, Nightmare character seems to be trying to pull out old memories. And he's like, I don't have old memories to pull out, or at least I don't remember them. So, you know, I this is hurting, and I want this guy out of my head. So Professor X is like, all right, fine, I'll help you out. So they basically are like, all right, let's go in. So Wolverine dives right back in. It's this cool, like, jungle, savage land-looking place, which is awesome. And, and you know, we have uh, Nightmare here taunting Wolverine and saying, like, yep, yeah, keep coming. Uh, you know, I want you here. I want you to be afraid. I want you to battle me. And that's when, uh, you know, he's like, but I, I brought someone else to this world, uh, you know, to help elevate your fear, help elevate... Uh, uh, the state of mind I need you in so I can, you know, get what I want from you. And Wolverine's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, yeah, he's like, uh, let me introduce you to Venom. So the final page of the first issue is Wolverine, you know, meeting Venom essentially for the first time. And even Wolverine's like, Venom? Like, I don't, I don't understand. I don't know what Venom is. Uh, and so uh, that carries over to this book where, you know, basically Wolverine, you know, he doesn't keep tabs on Wolverine, around Spider-Man. So he doesn't really know what's going on in Spider-Man's life. Uh, but, you know, he gets all the lowdown from Venom because Venom's like, yeah, you know, I'm here. Why am I here? You know, who are you? Are you a friend of Spider-Man's? You know, blah, blah, blah. So they, the two of them get at it and they go at each other. Eddie Brock obviously does know who Wolverine is uh, because he's, you know, he's a journalist. He's, you know, probably in, looked at mutant life before, probably written a couple articles on them. So they kind of treat it to where Eddie Brock kind of knows who Wolverine is, but Wolverine's kind of confused at who Venom is. So that's why Wolverine is trying to maybe team up with him. He's like, look, we're both being manipulated here. And I, you know, I think we can team up. And Venom's like, no, we're going to keep fighting. He's like, because, uh, you know, Nightmare told me that you're like, you know, you're in my way of doing something heroic. So I'm here to destroy you. And he's like, yeah, Nightmare's lying to you, dude. And he's like, no, he's like, there's an innocent here. I know it. And so the, you know, the two of them start getting into this fight and Wolverine's like, come on, man, snap out of it. Like, you know, uh, there, you know, there's no one here to save. And he's like, yeah, then who's that? And there's this girl that looks just like Mariko. Uh, so it's Nightmare pulling memories out of Wolverine's mind. And he pulls out Mariko, uh, who had just recently died in the comic books. And Wolverine is dealing with that. It's like a guilt, a loss for him. And so, uh, so you know, she's there. And Venom's like, I got to save her from you. You're going to kill her. And, uh, and then these, like, lions show up. Like, that's, like, the danger she's in is all these lions and wild animals are going to go tear her apart. And Venom shows up and starts tearing down these lions, like Venom versus lions. And then Wolverine shows up and is, like, cutting cheetahs in half and everything. Um, yeah, it's a really, uh, <laughs> really anti-animal uh, moment here. Uh, but, you know, obviously this is all a nightmare. This is just what Nightmare is creating for them in the astral plane. He's just, uh, this, none of this obviously is real. Uh, so then Mariko gets away. She's running off. And Wolverine's like, we got to, you know, I, I got to go talk to her. And Venom's like, no. And Venom throws Wolverine across the woods, actually. And Wolverine gets impaled on a tree here. And then uh, Venom comes up and takes the killing blow and uh, kills Wolverine. Uh, so then, yeah, so Venom, you know, he doesn't know maybe the full extent of Wolverine because he's surprised when Wolverine isn't actually dead and when Wolverine comes back. Uh, but the book starts off with well, the next issue with Wolverine, you know, impaled on that tree. And he's like, okay, that's not cool. And then you have Nightmare here who's like on his horse and he's at the top of his mountain. He's like, all right, Wolverine's almost there. He's afraid now. He lost a fight. He's getting angry. He's getting to the point where I need him to be at. And then that's when, uh, you know, Venom has the girl and he gets to a clearing and Wolverine is there and he's fully healed. And he's like, yeah, he's like, uh, I heal, bub. He's like, so, you know, the tree thing uh, that didn't, didn't kill me. And so uh, Venom's like, well, maybe drowning will. So he tackles Wolverine and they go into the water. And they're each trying to drown each other. And uh, and then at the end, they fall off the cliff down the mountainside. And uh, you have here Wolverine going like, uh, you know, um, what was he says? Uh, oh, yeah, Venom has a sense of humor. Last one down is a rotten egg. And then uh, <laughs> Wolverine says, yeah, see you at the bottom, bub. So I kind of like that. You know, Howard Mackey did a good job keeping that Venom sense of humor in there. But also keeping that uh, tone of Wolverine, too. You know, I thought Howard Mackey did a really good job here uh, with both characters, actually. And, and even Nightmare. I thought Nightmare was a pretty compelling villain in the storyline. Even though he's just sitting back and manipulating, when you find out what he's after, it's pretty neat. Uh, so when they get to the bottom, you know, Wolverine heals. He fell on a rock, but he healed. But Venom did not. Venom, is the suit is still trying to heal Eddie, and Wolverine heals much faster than that. So when he gets up... He's ready to leave Venom for dead, and there's like wild animals and crocodiles and things coming in, and they're going to kill Venom, and Wolverine says, you know what, you know, this guy is a pawn just like me, and uh, I'm not going to, even though he's a kind of a D-bag, and I, I want to stab him in the face, I'm not going to let him die because uh, I might need his help going forward dealing with Nightmare, so, uh, so he ends up saving Venom or Eddie Brock, and he sits and waits for him to heal, and then he says, all right, now that we're, you're healed, 
I want to tell you, like, this is what our mission is. We're going to team up. We're going to fight Nightmare. You've been manipulated. And Eddie Brock's like, yeah, okay, fine. I, you know, you, I, I admit it. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll join you on this quest. And so Wolverine's like, all right, but before we do, I owe you one. You impaled me on a tree. So boom, Wolverine <laughs> straight up impales Eddie Brock. And he's like, all right, now we're going to wait for you to heal from that. And then we're going to go fight Nightmare. <laughs> and so he does. He just leaves, you know, Venom under a tree to heal for a while. Uh, and so then after he heals up, you know, they decide to go in and that's when they come across this giant weird creature with this weird dragon head on a giant, you know, fat human uh, body uh, that's on the cover here. And uh, this Sam Keith just going crazy with his monster designs. I love it. Uh, and then they have to fight him in this issue. So yeah, you get this. I love the art though. It's so, so good. Um, and so yeah, Wolverine and Venom, they team up in this issue to kill that thing. Uh, Venom webs it from behind, webs the back of his head, pulls it back. And then Wolverine jumps up and slices its throat. Uh, which is pretty cool. So yeah, great teamwork from them. Um, and then, of course, uh, th then they see that the girl Mariko, she keeps changing forms because Nightmare keeps manipulating the scenario. So uh, Mariko actually turns into Spider-Man. So then Venom jumps over and starts strangling her, uh, but it's, you know, but he sees Spider-Man and Wolverine's like, it's not Spider-Man, look. And they he pull, you know, Wolverine pulls Venom off him and then eventually Mar she turns back to Mariko and then she disappears for good. And he's like, see, this is all Nightmare. So then they you know, they're like, once they see and Venom's exposed to the truth, he's like, okay, I won't be manipulated anymore. Let's go get the guy. And so he's at the top of his hill and uh, sitting on his horse. And then they run up there to go after him. Wolverine goes in and cuts the stomach of the horse to kill it while Venom webs Nightmare and yanks him off and then brings him down to, uh, you know, Wolverine's level. And then Wolverine shoves the claws right through his head. Uh, like they do not mess around. But then even at that moment, uh, you know, he's like, we did it. Uh, now you're afraid enough. You you know, you're still scared. Uh, the Mariko thing, you weren't even sure if you were right on that. I've elevated you to a level where I need you at. And now I can get what I've always wanted. And so that's when you find out that actually Nightmare did not even want Wolverine. He actually wanted Professor Charles Xavier. And because Wolverine is tethered to Charles in the real world, Nightmare is like, I now have access to him. I've been trying to crack into that guy's brain all this time. And I've never been able to. So I decided to use you. I gave you these nightmares throughout the week. I knew you would turn to Charles. And then now that Charles is here with you, I can ride that tether. Now that you feel all the emotions that I've needed you to feel, now that you feel victory, that's the final step. And he's like, now that you got all those emotions out of the way, I can trace that back through and get access to Charles Xavier. I love this two-page spread here. It's really awesome where Wolverine is basically telling Venom, like, we screwed up. Like, I let him right to Charles. And uh, and he's like, yeah, he's like, who's Charles? And then they start talking to each other. And then that's when, uh, you know, Nightmare starts take, you know, taking it out on them, brings in these other creatures to, like, fight them and, and, and stab them and hurt them and try to keep them occupied while it goes, you know, while Nightmare goes off to try to infiltrate Professor X's mind. And then meanwhile, Wolverine and Venom, they overcome all this and they grab Nightmare before he can ride the tether all the way out. And Wolverine had says to him, hey, actually, we planned this all along. Because as he's riding the tether, all of a sudden there's a stop. And Nightmare's like, what's going on? And then Wolverine tackles him, puts the claws out, and shoves him once again right through Nightmare's head. And says, don't you see? He's like, Charles and I baited you. Charles knew you've been trying to break into his mind all this time. And he used me and me and him worked out this plan since you were giving me these nightmares to trap you. And he's like, so we don't know why Venom's here. And, you know, Nightmare's like, I just randomly picked Venom because he's like this scary thing that I saw. And his, his symbiote and his relationship with it was interesting. And they were having some interesting nightmares of their own. So I thought I would bring them in because I thought that they would just, you know, be a good, you know, distraction for you. So Venom was just a full on pawn, uh, which did not make Eddie Brock happy and he's like I want to you know tear this guy apart now but Wolverine's like don't worry we're gonna take care of him so Wolverine you know had the claws in his head he gives access to Charles Xavier and Charles Xavier is able to banish Nightmare from the astral plane for good and so at the end you have your victory uh Eddie Brock is now fading away and he goes back to his world and uh, he's like do you think it'll work you know did all that you know work are we safe from him invading us again and uh you know Wolverine said yes Charles has you know put up a block we can each we're now protected from especially me uh we're protected from Nightmare ever coming into our world again uh but uh you know you you're kind of on your own <laughs> uh you know tell your symbiote or whatever it is to like help protect you from now on um because because I can't really say I don't know really what's gonna happen from here on out but I just didn't know that the astral plane, at least for now, is safe from Nightmare and he's not going to get Charles. He's not going to have access to the most powerful telepath in the world. And which means you're safe, I'm safe, and, you know, humanity is safe. So Venom's like, all right, I guess we did a good deed here. And then at the end, Charles is like, hey, do you want me to just scan your mind one more time to make sure Nightmare is gone? And Wolverine's like, no, Charles, I think I need some real sleep uh, for once, you know. And so Charles is like, all right, Wolverine, enjoy your rest. And that's kind of how the book ends. So it was pretty cool because you get some real battles uh, between Wolverine and Venom, even though it happened on an astral plane, 
you still get the battle, which is pretty cool. And we've talked about these two fighting before, especially in the Daniel Way run. Uh, there was like the clone Venom was fighting Wolverine in that run. Uh, so this is not the first time these characters have met. It's definitely not going to be the last time. Uh, or actually, I think this is the first time these characters have met, uh, but it wasn't in the Daniel Way run. Uh, but yeah, it's not the last time. These guys meet numerous times over and over and over in video games and comic books, uh, which is really fun. I always like the interaction between these two, but I always like that this is kind of their first introduction to each other. And Wolverine... Uh, doesn't just want to kill Venom. And I think it's because of the scenario, because Wolverine knows what it's like to be someone's pawn and be manipulated. And so when Venom's in that scenario, I think he's like, all right, I'm going to give this guy the benefit of the doubt, and I'm not going to just stab him through the face. I'm going to actually try to reason with him. And that made this book interesting, because you know all the time when you put these characters in a room together, you just want them to fight instinctively. You know, that kid side of you with you know toys comes out, and it just wants to mash them together. But I really like you know Howard Mackey did here. He tried to actually how these characters act the way they would in these scenarios. Even Wolverine, I mean, a Venom at first acted a little bit out of character, but you kind of understood why as they explained it in it and what he was seeing, like his mind was seeing innocent people at harm. And so uh, because of that, it made him, you know, you kind of understand why he acts the way he does at the beginning. But then once everything's cleared up for him and he realizes just how much of a pawn he was in this, he's like, okay, I will now help you, Wolverine, because innocents are at stake here. And if, you know, Nightmare gets access to Charles Xavier, everyone in the world is at stake. You know, everyone in the world is in harm's way. So, uh, so yeah, so Venom steps up at the end and, and becomes a hero. But as far as I know, these issues were never recollected in any form, uh, which is a real bummer, because uh, I, I think people definitely need to check out this storyline. I thought it was really awesome. If they do like a Marvel comic, Sam Keith, art booklet, uh, you know, with a bunch of his stories that he drew. I hope that they, you know, make something like that and put this in there because this is a lot of fun uh, for sure. And like I said, it's only really the length of like two comic books. So I can see why it's not put in its own trade paperback, uh, but I would love to see it included somewhere in some trade paperback of Venom's or Wolverine at some point. Maybe a Venom versus the Marvel Universe trade paperback or a Wolverine versus the Marvel Universe trade paperback. I think they already did one, but maybe another one. Uh, but yeah, I would like to see something like that. That way you could put all of these, Dark Hawks, the Wolverines, you can put all of them in a nice like you know $30 trade uh, with all of Venom's appearances in other people's books that would be really awesome but anyway that's my thoughts on this you know I like the book a lot I thought it was fantastic have you read it yourself if so let me know down below and if you haven't what are your thoughts of everything we've gone over here do you think these guys acted in character do you disagree with me on that whatever it is let me know down below and we'll continue our conversation down there thanks so much for watching my show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and I'll see you in the future peace